Well, let's talk about that that first big vote. Where where are we at on that? Well, the speakership. Well, it's uh, an important vote. It is a big vote, but it's just one of many big votes that we have to uh, make our a conscientious decision on to represent our district. And uh, I'm going to vote for the most conservative, liberty-loving, capable um, candidate that will impartially enforce the rules. So if um, the more conservative doesn't win and Speaker Strauss is re-elected, um, what kind of consequences do you think could happen from your vote? Well, I, I've worked with the Speaker in the past. If he continues to to serve in that capacity, I look forward to working with him. Um, we have common ground, and uh, I've worked with him in that way. And even though I did run against the Speaker last time, I did get on the committees uh, that I desired, and, and so did Representative Brian Hughes. I mean, he got on appropriations, appropriations yeah. and criminal jurisprudence, important committees. So I don't think he was vindictive. And I'm not expecting that. Uh, I'm grateful for that. Uh, certainly, that's probably happened in the past, but uh, it didn't happen last time. And uh, so I work with, on principle, not based on personality. And I hope we move forward. Whoever is the speaker. And we actually have really good rules on conference committee processes when we to limit the reconciliation between the House bill and the Senate bill between the two differences and not go outside the bounds. If they go outside the bounds, we're required to go back to each chamber and ask for permission to discuss those outside the bounds proposals and to take action on them. But what actually happens is they go ahead and discuss them and act upon them and then pass a resolution or seek the, to basically grant forgiveness for uh, going outside the bounds. Most people don't even read the resolutions. They are usually fairly lengthy. We get them right before we have to vote on the biggest bill like the budget and other fiscal matters bills. And so this is an effort to really do what we say and to be transparent about it there are times to go outside the bounds, but we need to do it with the permission prior to adopting and acting on the conference committee report. Let's talk about taxes real quick. I know that uh, Representative Turner had a bill last session that would have uh, abolished the, the margins tax. Is that something you would support? I certainly would. It's a form of income tax. In fact, you can at least you used to be able to lose money and still have to pay taxes on it. That is uh, really unfortunate. It's a, it's a bad way to collect taxes. How, how and and one of the ways, reasons why it's bad is because like uh, the federal income tax, it's intrusive and it requires you to disclose things that really are none of the state's business. Did you take a look at the Comptroller's report yesterday? I just saw some uh, brief notes about it, but I, I saw that it was based upon some forecasts made back in November which is uh, a little disconcerting because we've, the gas has continued to fall, the price of oil has continued to fall since then. So, and of course, it, we have a free market. Everybody was complaining of when gas prices went up. We're concerned about freight for fruit and, and delivery of products. And so hopefully at a level out, uh, I think the best allocator of resources is a free market and I'm hopeful that that will resolve itself.